Yep, we got a box truck. 150, 160, he's gone. What's up guys, Max Maxworks here. And as you can tell, behind me is a box truck. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. You're like, Max, what are we getting delivered? Well, not actually anything delivered. This box truck is mine. Um, actually, it belongs to me and my buddy Danny. Uh, and so the kind of the quickie backstory here is this truck used to belong to Danny's company. Uh, and over the course of doing business, they discovered that it's actually a lot more cost effective for them as a business to simply rent one of these things whenever they need it. So this guy sat around for about two years and day one day Danny's boss was bitching to him about having to get rid of it and Danny said, we'll take it. And my buddy's boss was like, it doesn't run, it hasn't run in two years. And he was like, we'll take it for free. And so the guy came back with, you know, I guess a chuckle and was like, well, I'll give it to you for 50 bucks if you can get it to run. So Danny shook his hand and then he immediately called me. Uh, and then I went down there and I got it running, need some new batteries, need a little hydraulic lines made. And just like that, we have our own box truck. Now I brought it here to the house about two days ago. It's the amount of time it took for one of my piece of shit neighbors to uh, call the police. And the compliance guy came out here and said, your box truck is blocking the sidewalk. Box trucks can't block the sidewalk. Um, and so I can't store it here. So we've gotten a temporary storage. But however, I will be building a parking spot on the side of the house that's gonna be in, in some other videos uh, later on. But I just kind of wanted to give you guys the backstory on why I have a box truck. So now that we have a box truck, what are we gonna do with it? Danny and I are going to convert this beautiful International 4700 uh, into a festival and camping RV. Now, the reason we're gonna do that is because one, it's awesome, and two, we go to a lot of music festivals, and quite frankly, it's one of my favorite ways to spend my vacation days, but also because I've been wanting to do something like this for a long time. Those of you who used to watch my vlogs know I dreamt about building a schoolie for a long time and uh, never really got to it. Well, this is going to be better than a schoolie because it's got a better engine. It's got a seven speed manual transmission, uh, which means I can take it up to the mountains and stuff like that. And it'll go good. It does about 70 miles an hour on the open road. We're going to modify, get a little bit more power out of the engine. Um, and so going to, you know, do a whole bunch of stuff. This is kind of my entry video. This project will be called hashtag the base box. So when you search social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Facebook uh, or YouTube, if you search hashtag the base box, you will get all of the videos of us building this thing. Uh, there will be a future video that kind of goes into depth once I have a scale uh, model kind of made of what we're going to do that goes in depth and talks about exactly how we're going to build this and everything is going to go into it. Uh, today's video is just to show you guys this project to introduce you to it um, and we're gonna go through and this cab is absolutely filthy it was used as a work truck for a number of years um, and so I'm gonna clean it out and make it nice and maybe inflate try to inflate the tires a little bit more and a few other things clean out the back and then today we have to actually move it into storage and so that's what's gonna be about today's episode but in the future we're gonna have big build days you guys are gonna get to meet some of my friends here on the channel um, they're gonna come out and help us and basically we're gonna go Saturday morning, get the truck, bring it back, work on it, uh, at least until I get my parking spot built. But then this truck will live here and the plan is to get this done something in six to eight months. Uh, we are targeting euphoria of next year, which is in April, May timeframe uh, as a test run. So maybe not a fully finished product, but something we can camp in for a weekend. Um, you know, we want to do, uh, what's it called? Shangri-La up in Canada, do, uh, you know, Utopia Fest next year, do a Big Ben trip, stuff like that. That's the plan for this truck. Um, like I said, there's gonna be a separate video that covers kind of our engineering design goals, and I'll probably do that on my own, show you guys models, uh, how we're gonna build everything, all the systems we're gonna put into it. But today I just wanted to introduce you to the latest addition to the Maxworks fleet. Uh, she is a big girl, um, about 35 feet end to end. Uh, for the tech guys out there, it's got a DT-466 engine, a Spicer 7-speed uh, manual gearbox. Um, I don't know what's in the rear end. There's no air ride. It's a conventional box truck. 
Um, and the cabin is shitty, so I can tell you guys right now we're gonna do do some diesel work uh, for because you know me, I gotta I gotta get my hands under the hood. And uh, we're definitely gonna pimp out the cabin for long trips, so it's actually comfortable because this thing is not comfortable. Uh, but the biggest amount of work is gonna go in the box truck. Uh, just kind of give you a brief overview. It's gonna have a fully functional toilet, shower, sleeping spaces, kitchen, uh, air con, the whole nine yards. Come along for this wonderful, what's gonna be this wonderful journey. Um, I've never taken on a project this big, uh, but thankfully I have friends that are gonna come and help me uh, along the way and we're gonna, we're gonna make this thing really unique and really special. Um, and hopefully soon you can see us on the road. Anyway, make sure to follow along, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Snapchat, you can give me a MaxWorks if you have any questions on the project, stuff like that. But for now, I'm just going to kick off into it. We're going to clean this puppy up, get her ready to put her in storage for a little while before we can get everything set up here at the house. Uh, let me just kind of show you around. First of all, this is a very, very Spartan vehicle, you know, but, uh, you know, everything works, so can't really complain too much. Uh, down here is our battery box. I got two brand new batteries, obviously diesel tanks on both sides. Um, today's plan is just to kind of clean this out and get an idea of how everything is uh, here in the interior. Um, obviously there's just like garbage and stuff left over from the other company. The other big issue I have is this. This is quite possibly the least comfortable seat I've ever ridden on in anything. Uh, certainly anything that I've ever owned. So we're going to have to figure out how to get some like, I don't know, big old conversion van seats or something in here. Um, as you can see, the rest of the interior is really Spartan. Uh, we're going to clean it up. We're going to put in a CB radio. Uh, we're going to put in a full sound system or, you know, as much of a sound system as I can fit in here. Um, and we're going to dynamat the absolute fuck all out of it. So that's kind of what the cabin looks like. Um, let me show you around a little bit more and then uh, we'll start cleaning this thing up. Under the hood, we got a DT-466 engine. Um, it is intercooled. It's got an intercooler here, which is cool. So it's one of the higher horsepower, like a 250 horse or whatever. But uh, this is the injection pump and it's a Bosch unit. And I don't really know a whole lot about diesels. Um, so I'm going to have to figure some stuff out. I do know that either in here or right here, or maybe underneath this thing and in here, there's like some adjustments that you can make and up the fuel pressure and whatnot. Obviously we're going to do all the uh, regular maintenance, new fuel filters, oil filters, etc. The big problem we got it was when we had an oil leak, this hose right here had rubbed itself raw in there and popped through. So I had a new hydraulic hose made. So now our power brakes work. So let me take you around to the other side. The other not so great thing is that the air con doesn't work. I put a little bit of a charge in it and uh, the compressor started to spin, which is a good sign. Um, but it definitely, um, definitely there's a leak somewhere and eventually I'm going to have to figure that out uh, and load it up with Freon. I thought about just doing like a stop leak thing, but since we're actually keeping this thing, I probably need to fix it properly. Um, but yeah, it's a big old six cylinder engine with a big old diesel turbo. For bringing you around, exhaust is down there. They were uh, nice enough to put brand new tires on it. These things are super expensive and super underinflated. And the other cool thing is we have this right here, which is a working uh, Tommy gate. And I'm going to be using this thing here in a minute, but you know, yeah, as you can see, it is completely fully functional. Um, try not to drop this on me. And this thing is going to be awesome later on uh, because loading tools and stuff up here is not that fun because I'm, uh, I'm about six foot tall and this thing comes up almost to my nipples. So that is unfortunately <laughs> as far as we can go with that. Roll this puppy up step up in here and this is going to be our living quarters as you can tell we've got super high ceilings which is awesome um, we're going to put some solar up there we're going to put some skylights up in here but uh, this is all wood which is cool um, I think what we can actually do now that I'm looking at it is I think we're going to take off all of these wooden pieces right here fill in all of this with insulation and then put these back on and use these actually 
as our wall framing because they are durable as fuck. Um, made in the USA. The cool thing is these wood floors, actually I've looked around, I need to clean up in here a little better, but I looked around and these wooden floors are in really good shape. So what I think we're gonna do um, is sand them smooth. There's a little bit of water damage right here. May I replace that. But we're gonna sand these floors smooth and then seal them with epoxy. And I think this will give it a really cool kind of like rustic look. And we're gonna keep the sliding door and we're gonna build an inside wall somewhere in maybe in here so we can leave dirt bikes and kayaks and stuff like that back over here. Yeah, let's see what, whoa, I don't know what that goes to. Hope that's not important. But all in all, this box is really cool. It's really big. Um, and I think it'll work out really well for our needs. <laughs> conceptual floor plan here uh, on the ground in painter's tape which by the way one of the best ways to lay out an area is just to grab a roll of painter's tape and start marking up the floor with it that way you can walk around see what things feel like in real life dimensions and then get a better understanding of whether or not it's going to work for you so right here is the front of the truck the cab is through that wall um, this right here this large area right here this is what's called the uh, master bedroom if you will and so the reason this is important is going to be almost a full-size queen bed, right? 60 inches by whatever the width of this truck is. Um, and this is going to be built somewhere around chest level with a set of stairs cut into it. And the reason this is going to be an elevated sleeping platform is because elevated sleeping platforms are dope. But more importantly, it's going to give us a ton of built-in storage underneath, which we're going to need for everything from dish towels to uh, coffee pots to whatever. There's going to be a kind of cool custom built storage unit underneath. Now my plan is perhaps make this out of uh, weld together an aluminum frame for this. And of course, eventually, you know, to set the mood, um, I'm going to try to put in a skylight right here where this panel is. Um, when we drop the ceiling, I'm going to put a skylight in here to put it right over the master bedroom. Um, I think this is a good, good space for two people to be able to sleep in. Um, and so I think that's going to work. So moving straight out of the master bedroom uh, here, 
basically you're gonna have access in the middle like a door to let you into all the storage and I still gotta figure out how that's gonna work but that's how we're gonna make it work uh, then after that right here on the left hand side you have a 36 by 44 inch shower uh, the small standard shower bases are 32 inches by 32 inches which for a guy with my shoulders is pretty cramped but it's an RV it's not a house so whatever plus this should give us an extra 12 inches to put in an area for people to keep their clothes so they can be able to change before stepping out of the shower right next to the shower is going to be the bathroom and the way we're going to do is we're going to plumb it so that um, this wall, this shared wall right here, will um, have all the plumbing. So you're going to have the shower head on one side and over here you're going to have a small sink and the toilet bolted in right here. So that takes care of all the plumbing right here on one side. Uh, the other thing is remember there's going to be a certain thickness to this wall. I'm going to make it as small and as thin as I can. Uh, maybe even using like one by ones or something like that or one by twos um, to build it out. But we're going to have to make it as small as we can to maximize the floor space. On the other side, there's a little hallway, which is a walkway to the master bedroom right here. This is 24 inches deep, 88 inches wide to match the uh, toilet and the shower. This is gonna be our kitchen, so maybe floor to ceiling kitchen cabinets, uh, like a window, more kitchen cabinets up here, because we got a lot of headroom, so we really gotta utilize the vertical space. Um, small electric stove, uh, maybe a sink, uh, built in here and that'll be easy to run under the floor back to the drainage now that leaves this area right here I don't know how how long this is right here I have to do some math but basically this right here will have a couch on one side that's like a futon that's gonna fold and it's gonna allow three or four people to sleep here uh, because it's actually quite large so let's walk it off two three four five six seven eight almost eight feet which uh is it's almost two queen size beds uh can go over here and so you know it should fit quite a few people plus we're still planning on doing hammocks so there might be hammocks that that kind of hang in here um right through here there's going to be a side door i'm not really comfortable with there being only one way in and out of this thing from a safety standpoint plus we're going to have a porch on the side of it so that's gonna be where the side door is gonna go, so there won't be anything in this wall right here. Um, we may build this out a little bit further, depending on how the bed, the whole thing works. And then this is an idea we're kicking around. Um, I'm not really sure how I feel about it yet, although it was my idea. Um, this right here is three feet, and I'm calling it a mud room. The idea being that, you know, if we wanna go kayaking, or if we wanna go, or if I wanna go dirt biking, or whatever i want to be able to put like a dirt bike in here or a kayak or if we're just hiking people can dump all their muddy shoes and boots and stuff now three feet is enough to store a dirt bike or kayaks or whatever um but we may end up making this about a foot uh only just for shoes and stuff depending on how the interior space uh works out um also there's going to be a drop ceiling here because we want to keep this door so i'm going to drop the ceiling to here basically to include the rails then we're going to insulate everything the cool thing about this is i can put an inch and a half insulation in here and then reuse these wood studs um, and basically use them to frame in my walls same for the ceiling um, that way we can get uh you know i don't know one inch insulation is what r5 um so inch and a half is like r7 r8 so hopefully we can get some decent insulation again it's an rv so you know it is what it is but we would like to have we're going to have ac and we would like to be able to actually have that ac function properly so that's about it for uh for the interior walkthrough um there's still obviously a ton of work because we haven't really started on anything but the cab is clean the floor plan is marked out i got the measurements i need so i'm gonna start uh, building a model in SketchUp and we're gonna go through the final design in a separate video uh, once we have a final design uh, I want to thank you guys for watching uh, if you're new here hit the subscribe button if you like what you see hit that like button uh, it lets me know that we're doing a good job and remember you can find all of the videos associated with this project by searching hashtag the base box as well as follow along to Maxworks on Instagram if you search Hashtag the base box. You're going to find a few old subwoofer pictures and then you're going to find all the pictures I've been posting about this thing. 
Um, and there's probably gonna be quite a few by the time this video comes out. So make sure you check that out. Um, as always, I'm Max. This is Max Works. Thanks for watching. Peace.